So, Doug, <laughs> why don't you go ahead and tell me a little bit about your situation before the coaching? I have a unique situation because I had been part of the pickup artist movement 20 years ago, <laughs> but you know, when it was new and fresh and uh, all the, all the different gurus are out there, you know, building up their repertoires and their advice columns. And I was reading everything on the internet. I actually joined a lair in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where I, where I grew up in that area. And it was great. It was good. You know, it was good because it was guys helping guys. The, the guy who led the thing was a Christian and whose his mission was helping men to become better men to attract better women. That was kind of their thing. Um, and then I had an 11 year relationship after that, which was success, right? It kind of worked for me. You know, I did, I learned some techniques. Well, 11 years is a long time when, you know, to find out the person probably wasn't the best mix for you. She's great, but just not able to be enjoy and enjoy my lifestyle that I have. Mm -hmm. So, Fast forward 20 years, I find myself, it sounds like a big flex, crazy wealthy because I'm an early Bitcoin adopter, <laughs> traveling. I bought a place in Miami. I have a cabin in Minnesota still. I bought a house in Vegas and I've got 86 acres in Austin and I bought a four bedroom yacht. I'm in the best shape I've ever been in and I'm... 20 years older from when I first started. So these things affected my brain a little bit. Um, it's how can I look how old I'm getting? I'm in a place filled with beautiful women and it seemed like they're out of reach. Um, I therefore went back to my old habits of going with women who, who took advantage of me or who I, I didn't have abundance. And so I settled. Oh God, I settled badly and there were red flags everywhere. I had a very a difficult relationship for a mere three months. Um, and I spent way too much money and she was not appreciative and she had a mental illness. I'm sure I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty damn sure. So, and then, I, and then I was again, single and lonely and sad and you know, why is this working out for me? And I had mindset issues mindset issues and a friend of mine said hey watch this guy and, and by the way david david you're not the first guy i guru i i followed you know there's todd v dating there's orion taraban um there's a bunch of these things which, and there are a lot of them are really good advice but you know what having someone kick your ass on nearly daily calls and really like hold your hand. It's not like a pussy thing to say for a bunch of guys, but you know, having someone kick your ass, that sounds a little better yeah. <laughs> is so important, you know, and, and the support provided, um, I mean, literally now, what is it? Four days a week or is it five days a week? Five. Five, five days a week. You know, that's amazing. And that's what I missed from my old days, 20 years ago in person in Minneapolis. That's, you know, uh, cause that's, that's, you cannot replace having other guys and sharing their stories and hearing from people live. Oh, that happened to me. So there's many ways of learning through a, a live coach. One of them is, you know, having you guys be in my ear and tell me the right things, the wrong things, but also hearing other people and their struggles is, is really powerful. And if, you know, um, the nice thing about today's technology is I can visit you. And you can visit me. I'm in Miami and you're in Ireland. Mm -hmm. So I had a, I went through a, um, I went through a, a, a matchmaker for a while. Mm -hmm. Biggest waste of money ever. And I'll <laughs> tell you exactly why I, I realized this. Men need matchmakers because they're pussies because they can't meet a real woman in real life. It's true. Men who are pussies will never be able to attract those women. All the matchmakers just put you in the same room together. It's still up to you to build attraction, create attraction, take it to the next level. Yeah. If you don't have those skills, the most expensive matchmaker and being across from the most beautiful women in the world won't matter. 
So that was money thrown away. Um, so, and in fact, not just money thrown away. Think about this. That made me feel worse about myself. Yeah, oh, yeah because now I have these beautiful women in front of me and I still can't do anything with it. Exactly. I, I went on, you know, and when I first joined your, your program, do you remember how like flabbergasted I was to hear that people were having sex on the first, second or third date? Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. happens? Come on. Okay. Maybe it happens for these younger guys. That happens for older Come on, you know, and I was like, it was incredulous that this is yeah, yeah. <laughs> right because I'm dating these these beautiful, bougie, fancy women that the matchmaker is putting in front of because I'm a wealthy, you know, older man. So they match you up with hot chicks who are looking for wealthy men who can take care <laughs> of them. Yeah. And that's awesome. And these girls were were mostly beautiful. I mean, they, they were. Mm. I would go on a third date without kissing them. And oh, surprise, they're no longer interested. And I was like, going, what, what do you mean? I'm being a gentleman. Mm. You know, I, I, I thought we had a good connection. Yeah, I know. We were, we were, look, we both do snorkeling. We both, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I'm willing to put up the fact that you're 40 and have a kid, you know? And, you know, I, I'm thinking I've got to, she's hot, but I got to settle. Be and so it was just, it made it worse for me to, uh, when I finally jumped on board here and decided this was a much, Better. Well, I didn't know if it was a better use of my resources. It is. What made you take the leap of faith? Because before you didn't know, it was a bit of a leap of faith. Um, basically, I watched enough of your content. Okay. And you kept coming up in, in my feed. So, you know, uh, the, the Instagram and YouTube algorithms favored your, your marketing technique, which is awesome for you. <laughs> oh. By the way, my girlfriend is calling me to tell me about her, <laughs> her job interview. I'm going to hang up with her. Ooh, I, I was kind of coaching her a little bit on, on how to you know, go through her new job interview. So anyway, um, yeah, so I, I have a girlfriend now. She's calling me to tell me how great her job interview went. Awesome. So I'm kind of her mentor in a way. Good. <laughs> Which yeah, is a great place to be. You know, yeah. as, as a, oh, you, that's you, one you, of the things. There's a lot of things you can teach her and show her, and she'll expect that. Yeah. Right. Okay. So the leap of faith you asked about. Um, yes. Well, I think I reached out to you and I had seen other, other guys too. Um, I, I'm a, you know, I don't, I, I know you don't have other competitors on your, on your thing, but Orion Taravan, give you some time to cut that out, um, is, is awesome. And I had two consultations with him and he didn't have, the time, of course, to spend like you guys do with your program. Um, but he had great advice that bombed in my head that helped me overcome some of the, the thought processes. And then when I finally pulled the trigger with you, because I needed more, I needed more help. It was clear a one-time consultation from a guy who I respect isn't going to be enough anyway. Yeah. So I, I needed, I needed more handholding. So the class I'm looking at right here, I, I'm only 60% done. You know, that's how, how successful this has been. 60% has got me uh, a freaking sexy, hot 24 year old girl. And I'm 57. <laughs> <laughs> is there a way of like determining what the ratio is? Here's how much you need in order to a hundred percent is better, but Hey, Doug did it at 60, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so I think that was probably the big thing is I, the, the, the fact that you offered at the time, you know, multiple times per week uh, of live coaching and be able to sit in on those calls and see and listen and hear other people going through the same thing or people who had success. Yeah. It's always exciting to hear the guys when they, they have a success story, you know. Um, so that's I think that's what it was. It was it was just the level of of. Um, ass kickery that I could expect. And I know, I knew I needed that, by the way. You know, I, I didn't need someone, like the girl, the female therapists are really bad for guys. The, the matchmaker, I said, hey, what do you think I should do to overcome this? <gasps> you got to hear the story, man. Mm -hmm. There was one girl who I, I was interested in. She was a former Miss Romania. And I think she's in her mid-30s now, and she was out of this you know, relationship and she was on the dating scene again. So I'm, I'm had a date with her 
and it was a good first date. I took her to a place I'm comfortable with. I was teaching her how to play blackjack. She had never played before. So I was sort of in a leader role, which was awesome. And then I, and she touched my back. Oh, I was so aware of that. She touched my back as we walked through the casino and I pulled her along and this is going great. This is awesome. And all I had to pay for was a hamburger at the sports book bar. And I taught her to play and we play blackjack and you know, she won. Well, you know, it was, it was a good time. A good first date is no guarantee of a good second date. And I got in my head and I, she wouldn't respond to a, another date. So I finally said, Hey, I'm going to a comedy club. You should come with me. And I was, you know, that was one of the things that for my old lair, I'm going to be here. You should be there too. Well, a comedy club is the worst place to bring a date, mm -hmm. you know? So, and she brought a friend. <laughs> so anyway, fast forward to why my, my female um, matchmakers, they give terrible advice. She says to me, I said, what should I do? She goes, well, you know what? She complained about another guy when she was traveling and she went up to New York to meet him. And he just got out of like a day spa and she was pissed off that, or not pissed off, but she was like, you know, annoyed that he didn't invite her to the spa too. So maybe you should invite her to a spa day. So I said, let's go on a spa day. You know who says that? Gay guys say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, yeah. But she's a woman. So she would think of, you know, being yeah. invited to a no, it was just terrible advice. So anyway, I needed, I needed, I needed guys. I, I grew up with two sisters, my mom, my dad was semi-absent and all I got is female energy most of my life in a time of, of, of the world where feminism was just launching in the seventies, eighties was the whole women are equal to men in, in the nineties. I don't know when the me too movement happened, but it's all the same story. And it took some, you know, slapping around from various people to let me realize that, you know, men are different than women. They're not equal to women. They're better than women in many categories and women want that. That's another big realization. You know, They're, they don't want an equal. They may say they do, but they don't. Yeah. We're different. Yeah. yeah exactly. So I, 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 you helped me get into my masculinity of what it means to be a fucking man, you know, and you know, this is the way it is. This is my thing. Uh, you can follow me or you can go somewhere else and I'll have someone else following me in seconds. I mean, look at me, girl. <laughs> yeah. And so what's the outcome now? What's the situation now? <laughs> well, um, you know, it was, it wasn't easy by the way. It's difficult to be kicked in the ass and to face your, the problems that got me here in the first place and correcting 40, you know, 35 years of negative self-talk of, of my mom being in charge of my upbringing, not my dad, you know, and though that's 35 years of, of reinforcing that women are better than men or should be equal to men. And that went in my brain as being, they are the same as men, which is not the truth. So the outcome yeah, is we're equal in terms of rights, but we're not equal in terms of how we operate. Right. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, they're, they're, they're equal under, under the eyes of God, you know, all men, all of mankind is created equal. I get it, but you know, we all have equal rights. For example, every single man and women have equal rights and should doesn't mean equal outcomes. Yeah. So anyway, now, um, I was, I successfully, I could, I was getting in front of very many beautiful, hot young girls because of my resources. Cause I have a yacht. I had a, a guy planning parties on the yacht and I would go to the yacht and be in front of these young women and go, wow, what would they see in me? Cause the negative self-talk would kick in mm -hmm. and I would see them having fun. And I'm, I'm not a party animal, you know, you, that's the other thing about, you know, going through your program is like, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm a Bitcoin nerd. <laughs> I like watching economic debates, yeah. you know, throw me in front of, you know, I want to, I'm a beta tester for Tesla. This is what turns me on. Right. <laughs> And, and so I was trying to think of things to say that she would want to hear. And no, man, if I were just to say what I like, want to talk about. So I'm on the, on this boat and I'm surrounded by women almost every week and I'm failing to connect with any of them in an appreciable way. I'm getting Instagrams maybe, but I'm not able to turn that into 
a date because of my fears still. Um, um, but then finally, after I think I think I started, I joined you right after I met my. Uh, I can use her name, right? You can if you want to. You don't have to. <laughs> I mean, yeah, okay. She's not gonna ever see this, right? <laughs> it won't be on a public thing. Okay, you know, right, right after I met my girlfriend, uh, I met her and then completely failed to connect with her. Even though I was sitting next to her on the boat, she was helping with some Instagram things. I was trying to be cool. Everyone likes my dog, everyone likes my boat, but I'm not feeling confident. So I went on your calls and I set up a date with her, which fell through because of bad planning on my side, you pointed that out. I was like, what are you doing? Trying to bring her someplace at four o'clock. She's got a day job. Oh yeah, people with day jobs. <laughs> um, and so you challenged all of us on a call one day to like revisit any previous threads that started, but may, not, may have been left untapped. And so it's like, oh, and I had some. Say that maybe again, because you were far away from the microphone. Oh yeah. yeah. Cause that's um, an important part. Yeah, yeah. So you challenged us one time on one of the calls to reevaluate and check out any previous lead uh, that were there was a little bit of interest or previous right. conversations that you may have had with women that we could look at and revisit. Right, and I had had one. I had several actually, you know. So I just I think I did a. Um, She's calling me again. Oh. <laughs> send, her, send, send her a text. A, a text her. I'll, I'll call you. I'll call, I'm in a meeting right now. Yeah. I'll yeah, text yeah. you. I'll call you soon. In a meeting right now, I'll call you soon. So she knows you're not just pressing her away. In a meeting right now, I'll call you right back. Oh, she's excited. You and your voice messages. <laughs> oh, that's so easy, man. You want me to type all that? <laughs> um, okay, so the point I was saying was um, <laughs> you challenged us to revisit um, some, in my case, Instagram leads that were going someplace, but I let go or things didn't work out three weeks ago, or in my case, three months ago. So I reconnected with her and said, Hey, let's go check out that Taco Bell, which was an inside joke that we had, you know, the drive through is not going to drive through itself. And she said, yes, that's the other thing that I, I can't believe it. You know, I keep on asking women out or to drinks and they say, yes. I mean, they don't always show up, but they say yes. It's like I would have been afraid to even ask that before. Yeah, it's a so, win. Yeah, yeah. And now I expect yes. And if I don't get a yes, the next one will say yes. Because I've had so many yeses in the past, you know? It truly is extinguishing behavior, you know, in, in one concept, psychological terms, where my disappointments of no's goes away because I get more, I'm getting yeses. And so the disappointment of the no's are diminished because I know there are yeses now. And I had to push myself to get some yeses. And I got some, which was awesome. Yeah, because so anyway. if you were almost anticipating the no, you were yeah. preparing yourself for pain. So you went in there with the expectation of rejection. And yes. Like, oh. And that happened every date from my my uh, matchmaker just about I would be able to you know I was just confused by women and what what makes them tick so you know it all helps so much to to, to go through the program and to read about it and uh, for me really the online meetings are, are yeah the most awesome awesome yeah. and if somebody's watching this and they're a little bit unsure should I do the program should I not what would you say to somebody like that I would say, I mean, obviously it worked for me. I mean, that's the most, the best praise and evidence for me. I have had matchmakers. I've had consultations with other high end gurus who are very popular on YouTube. I watched hours and hours of videos uh, on YouTube and I was part of a, you know, the pickup movement back 20 years ago. Yeah. And, and you know, I had to go through your program before I could land a girl and she's 24 and hot. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not, I'm not saying it to brag. Yes, I am. But, yeah, of you course know. you are. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, I now realize that but you also earned it, man, but you also earned it. Right? Yes, like, you, I deserve you, it. You deserve it. You put, you put in the work, like you're, you're, 
you're such a you have such warm energy i told you this and then you because it wasn't always easy there was a lot of feedback implemented feedback implemented there were some down moments and then boom progress you know so, so mm -hmm. you that shit. yep yep uh, that's, that's the way it is yeah and then you know i started i had a you, you recommend uh, meditation a lot and i'd never done it much or loosely or rarely to, for my sleep and then there are some specific ones that and then you actually did a guided meditation yeah. too that it i i needed some slaps in the head to get out of my funk and, and one of them led to moments of gratitude yeah. um for what i have yeah. and realization that what i have came from my efforts yeah. and then i realized fuck you know, it's like, I am a fucking man, you know, and I don't know why, yeah. why I mean, people looking at this might say, why does that, why was that guy such a wimp before? I mean, he's got everything going. It must be easy. Here's what I'm afraid your, your other clients might say is, oh, it's easy for Doug because he's a Bitcoin millionaire. He has a yacht. He lives overlooking the ocean in Miami, you know, must be rough. He's got an edge. Ugh. I did not. In my brain, I wasn't worth it. I was old. I got bags under my eyes. I, I found every excuse why, you know, I have everything that you would think would land girls a plenty, and it wasn't happening. The real issue was my own mental blocks. I actually went to EMDR therapy based on your recommendation. And it, that was kind of ironic because I was doing so well, but it, it was still very helpful. There is some trauma in my past that I had to get over. You know, that kind of had me stuck in my brain. So, and, and, and the EMDR therapy I went to was a hundred bucks per session. I, I don't know why it was so inexpensive, but the, and the guy was awesome. Yeah, yeah. and it was a guy yeah, too. That it's was normal. Cool. It's normal for therapy. EMDR is amazing. EMDR can be extremely powerful. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Anything else you'd like to share that I may have not asked about? Anything that comes to mind that you might think? It's relevant. Uh, just reiteration of most of our problems, guys who have a hard time finding girls, even with, you know, who are successful in business, it's 99%, 90% mindset. I mean, that, that, it sounds like a big percentage. There is some technique that you can't help me with. That was that really helped and was surprising how successful it was and how fast you move. That's the other thing. I was dragging it out. I got to go on a date and say hello. Then it's a second date where we get to know each other. Then there's a third date where maybe I kiss her. And then there's a fourth date where, you know, we, we hold hands in the park, you know, no, you go in right away. That's what, that's what they are looking for. Someone who's decisive. Decisiveness is a big thing too, yeah. but all by way of saying, um, you know, thanks, da David. <laughs> I don't think they did. <laughs> thanks, David. The other thing I haven't learned is how to pronounce your name yet, but I'll get that you'll done. Know, you'll get there eventually. You know, maybe the next boot camp or something. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and by the way, I now have a girlfriend, and we're exclusive. Um, but I'm not going to stop seeing you and visiting because there are some things I want to maintain this. Yeah, man. Or I need male support to get out if there's red flags that pop up. And I, I don't want to revert back to my old ways of like, oh, you know, for whatever reason. And I don't think I will. I don't think I will. But, you know, I want to, I want to make sure. And maybe she's not the one for me. And I've got to be able to walk away, you know, and then I might need your services in the future. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, let's be optimistic for now. But <laughs> oh, dude, I'm so optimistic <laughs> right now. But it's, it's the right point of view, but it's exactly the right attitude to take. It's to say, it's absolutely amazing. I see no red flags right now. I want this to go somewhere. Do I need you to be the one? Do I need it? No, absolutely not. Do I want this? And I can see this going extremely well for the long term. Absolutely. But it's not this, this has to fucking work because I'll never be able to find somebody else anymore, you know? Exactly. I, I was just telling my, my best friend and business partner, it's like, you know, I'm willing to walk away from my hot 24 year old girlfriend if the red flags pop up. And so far they have not mainly because I've made damn sure when there were red flags and there were, I brought them up on the calls. Mm -hmm. I nipped those in the bud right away. And yeah. boy, does she respect that. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it wasn't so much red flags about her. It was just moments of, for example, congruence tests or situations that needed to be, or potential conflicts, expectations that needed to be set, or boundaries that needed to be set, expectations boundaries. that needed to be managed. It wasn't so much because it wasn't so much that it was like a red flag about her as such. It was more, okay, hey, these are my expectations. What are your expectations? Let's align them very quickly and see if there's an impasse. Well, then we'll end it. And if it's not, right. then great. But that's exactly what you respected. Yeah. Do you want me to be specific on that? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So it was the second day. I remember clearly. We went out. I took her to a cool little speakeasy down here. For those who don't know, speakeasy is like the old classic uh, bars during prohibition where you had to sneak around and, and they were very classy, but underground, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, they opened one up here in Brickell. So I brought her there. It was really cool. Um, and I bought her one drink. That's it. I'm not buying girls dinner. I had, the only dinner I ever bought her was Taco Bell. Literally our first date was a Taco Bell mm -hmm. and that made for memorable we talk yeah. about it to this day. She, yeah. she brags about it with her, her people we meet. Oh, you know what our first date was? You know, we go to the whole story. But anyway, second date, she, you know, I think she had two drinks. She's, you know, she was feeling it a little bit. And she started making like, you know, some of my friends get purses from their rich boyfriends and go on trips. She said it much subtly, much more subtle, you know, the way they can do that stuck in my head though because my previous girlfriend i brought on trips i bought her literally a four thousand dollar purse don't tell anyone okay no I'm, I'm just kidding it's there i right so i did this cuck behavior with this one i'm not gonna do that i knew so i said the next day i said hey last night you said something about wanting a purse and being taken on trips. And I said, I hardly know you. I'm not going to be doing any of those things. Yeah. And she, I call, it might have been a shit test. She wasn't even aware if she was giving, but she immediately realized, ooh, I could lose this guy if I continue that. And so she just gave me a hug and goes, I don't need any of those things. And, and it sounded going, it sounded to me, I remember that, because it didn't sound to me like she was actually a gold digger it was more something that she'd seen people in her environment do and then she was like mm, let's see if i try this you know like let's, right. let's see it wasn't that she's like fully convinced that she needed that otherwise you wouldn't be together right now see what i'm saying exactly no you're exactly right you know she I, you know we live in miami here there's a lot of rich dudes she goes out and gets drinks bought for her and all of her friends yeah, and exactly. she says thanks bye you know so she she has that experience of being a hot girl in, in miami clubs you know you know anyway she said, I don't need any of those things. And then I said, and by the way, I'm still seeing other women. Mm. And I was, I was still dating. I was in your program early days with, with this one. I didn't know where it was going. I'm still meeting people all over the place. And that I think made her realize that I have optionality. Mm. I have options and that's a powerful place to, to come from. Yeah. Yeah, it's very attractive. Mm -hmm. Women want to be with a man who has options, not just somebody who settles and believes right. I'll never be able to do anything better than that. Yep, exactly. Um, there was another excellent little com or, or like uh, thing that happened that I did well within this relationship to, to set boundaries. I'm trying to remember what it was now. Um, Oh, it's, it's escaping me now. So you edit this out and piece this together better. But yeah, I can't remember what it was. Um, maybe it'll come to me later, but. It's fine. It's fine. There, there probably was more than that. It's just you weren't aware of it because what happens is it transitioned eventually into being an unconscious competence where you're not, yeah. where you set the boundary without even being aware of it. It's not just the running gag that Jonathan and I have, which is he once sent, do you remember when we, did we tell you that? The boot camp? Where he, he would... Uh, he was talking to a girl and she did something. And so he sends her a message on Instagram. He goes, he literally used the word boundary and then bullet point A, bullet point B. <laughs> so it doesn't have to be as overtly. It's sometimes very, right. very smooth the way you can do right. it. It doesn't always have to be a boundary. Because I sometimes do that with Fernanda. I'm like, I don't know a boundary. And she's like, David, you know, you don't actually need to use the word boundary when you're setting one. I was like, all right, okay. Yeah. Right. So yeah, man. no, but that's fucking awesome, man. Thank you so much. Yeah. Great.
Cool. Let me stop this. Yeah. All right. I got to call her back.